the packages have been opened. Trees and decorations now being put away, and soon we'll celebrate the new year and the new racing season. A uh, good Saturday morning to you, and welcome to Cocopa Speedway's Lap Time Live, brought to you by Cocopa Casino and by a one hour air conditioning and heating. Racing Radio here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. I'm your host, Mike Stanhope, and thank you for joining us today. Well, hard to believe we're saying it already, but racing just one week away, and you can sense the excitement already building for next Saturday's round number one of the 2014 Cocopa Speedway Racing Series, and one of the drivers getting primed up for it, Yuma Sean Hoskins, driver of the number 74 Street Stock. He's going to be joining us in just a few minutes to talk about the coming season and his hopes for 2014. Well, next Saturday's season opener at the Diamond in the Desert will feature action in all five of the Speedway's local divisions, and we're going to be getting used to a bit of a change in terminology as well as in the rules package as IMCA hobby stocks take the place of factory stocks at Cocopa Speedway and the street stock division enters the final year of its transition to IMCA stock car which becomes fully official in 2015. They will of course be joined throughout 2014 by the IMCA Northern Sport Modifieds, the Pro Stocks, and the full-blown IMCA A Modifieds. Well, as we know Noted last week here on Lap Time Live, the Cocopa Speedway Racing Series is in action for a total of 17 events in 2014, up one from 2013, and that, of course, coming on top of the other special events that'll round out the 2014 schedule. Going to be a big, big year of racing, and, well, we're ready to get it started. And going to be a running start to the year with next Saturday's season opener, as noted, and then round number two in the Cocopa Speedway Racing Series coming on January. 18th. Those two dates sandwiched around Cocopa Speedway's first ever motorsports and racers swap meet, which will take place January 11th out of Speedway from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, buyers, sellers, and traders paradise that day for all things motorsports as all involved in all forms of racing are invited to attend, not just dirt track enthusiasts, but you hot rodders, sand draggers, off-roaders, hey, motocross guys, and more. You can all be a part of that swap meet. If you've got items to trade or sell, well, display places are just 20 bucks. You can call the Cocopa Speedway office at 344-1563 for more information. Hey, we'd also note that tickets for the 2014 season are already available online at CocopaSpeedway.com. They'll be available starting early next week as well at Yuma area Napa Auto Parts stores and at the Cocopa Casino gift shop. And we're seeing a steady stream of inquiries already coming into the Speedway office about the annual I. MCA Winter Nationals coming February 7th and 8th and February 14th and 15th anticipating a big field of the best modified racers from across the country along with sport mod racers of course and IMCA hobby stocks as well. Advanced tickets for that event are again available online at CocopaSpeedway.com Hey on the subject of the modifieds for a moment at least one driver we saw part time in 2013 looks to be a full time presence in in 2014 at Cocopa Speedway. Casa Grand's Brian Schultz stepping full-time into the driver's seat of the 1E modified that Doug Rivera had purchased last month while at Las Vegas, duel in the desert. Schultz drove that car in the final race of 2013 at Cocopa Speedway and set to do so again full-time in 2014 as a team car of sorts to Rivera's 20H machine. One more note on the modifieds, the subject of crate-motored cars versus claim engine-powered cars, a subject of ongoing discussion in 2013 as crates, of course, debuted in the A-Modifieds and IMCA addressing engine parity along with some body issues in the modified rules package for 2014. Biggest of the changes announced maximum height on rear spoilers on modifieds powered by a crate engine dropped from three inches down to two. Some clarifications to the body rules as well, specifying noses extending no higher than the front hood of the car. The hood must cover the radiator and no complete car covers allowed while rear tail covers are permitted only in the personal pit area and solid pale sa uh, sail panels are required. We saw a nice mix of both claim and crate motors in 2013 at Coke Speedway. Going to be fun to watch 
again as drivers representing both camps are set to battle it out anew in 2014. Well, next here on Lap Time Live, we're set to visit with one of the men set for competition in 2014 in the Fisher Automotive Street Stocks. It's Yuma Sean Hoskins, driver of the number 74, and he is set to join us next here on Racing Radio. Cocopa Speedway's Lap Time Live, brought to you by Cocopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. Rush in the new year with a player celebration at Cocopa Casino. The celebration begins with a New Year's prime rib and seafood buffet for just 2013. Then enjoy live music all night long with the top 40 hits from the band Caliber across the casino floor. And special La Vida Loco with Banda San Jose. And everyone's favorite karaoke with Bling Bling. Players enjoy dollar drinks all night long and any coin champagne from 11 to 1 while supplies last. Rush in the new year with Cocopa Casino. Live the rush. It's the holidays again, and Clear Talk is making it easy to make your friends and family happier than a panda and a bamboo buffet. Give the gift of freedom with Clear Talk Wireless. No contracts, nationwide coverage, and we'll even flash your current phone. It's the best value in wireless, and that's enough to jingle anyone's bells. Dash through your holiday shopping this year. Give four lines of unlimited talk, text, and data for just 25 bucks a month per line. Find more at ClearTalkWireless.com. Clear Talk. More value, more freedom. Hello, I'm Mark Hansberger. The holiday season is here, so once again it is time to give thanks for all the good things in our life. It is time to be mindful of the needs of others. There are many that are less fortunate and look to our local nonprofits for assistance. Please donate your time, donate money, or both. It is up to us to make it possible for our local nonprofits to do the good work that is so desperately needed right now. Pray for those in need. Our great country has always been the one to help other countries. Now it seems we may not be able to save ourselves from ourselves. Pray for our country. We want to offer a big thank you to all our loyal customers. You have made it possible for Hansburger Federation to keep Yuma comfortable since 1952. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from Hansburger Federation. Count on us. I want a Ford Escape. <laughs> Hold the phone. Oh, boy. I can't seem to get anyone interested in dollies or superhero outfits. Nothing. I want a Ford Super Duty. Ah. One of the elves told me about the Ford Dream Big sales event going on at your local Ford dealer. <laughs> so these children have visions of fuel-efficient vehicles with smart features dancing in their heads. I'm thinking the Ford Fusion. Wow. Earning my milk and cookies this year. <laughs> During the Dream Big sales event at your Arizona Ford dealers, lease a Fusion for just $169 a month. Not all buyers will qualify for Ford Credit Red Carpet Lease. Payments may vary. Dealer determines price. Residency restrictions apply. Cash to its signing is after 750 customer cash and 1,000 conquest cash. Available to current lessees of non-Ford Motor Company vehicles with proof of ownership. Conquest and bonus cash require Ford credit financing. Take new retail delivery from dealer stock by January 2nd. See dealer for details. Rodeo was a window into our western past that quickly became a unique and exciting sport. The tradition of rodeo was well preserved in our region thanks to the efforts of former and present day Yuma JCs. The Silver Spur Rodeo is the largest project of the Yuma JCs, which began in 1946. Just a small piece of our rich heritage of rodeo heroes. The Yuma JC Silver Spur Rodeo continues to grow as the tradition is kept for future generations and the continued support of the Yuma community. Brought to you by Z93 and Outlaw Country. Welcome back to Racing Radio. It's Cocopa Speedway's Lap Time Live, presented by Cocopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. And we are joined in studio now by Sean Hoskins, driver of the number 74 Street Stock. And Sean, welcome to the program this morning. Hey, thanks for having me, Mike. Hey, I hope you had a uh, very Merry Christmas, Sean. Uh, it's always a good time hanging out with family over the holidays. Uh, indeed, it is the most special part of the holidays. Well, hey, let's uh, let's talk about uh, racing at Cocopa Speedway 2013, basically your first full year of competition, Sean. But uh, you got a couple of races under your belt uh, just prior to that. Yeah, my first one, I started off uh, early November uh, of 2012. Um, you know, I got a car and got it going and figured we'd give it a try. 
Well, that uh, launched you into 2013, where you were a full-time presence at Kokopo Speedway. But what is it that got you behind the wheel of the race car for the first time? Um, starting off in, uh, in 2012, I um, started helping out James Dupree in the pits when he was driving the uh, street stock division. And, um, you know, you get the itch. And when he moved up to the uh, do the um, sport mod class, I went ahead and bought his car and figured it was time. <laughs> and, and from there, never looked back, so Correct. to speak. Yep. Well, okay, one year under your belt, uh, how would you assess your learning experience for 2013? Because I'm sure you'd, you'd kind of classify it that way. It's it's a lot harder than it looks. Uh, you get out there and um, the, the learning curve is big. Um, you know, you're learning to, to navigate the corners, um, getting in, a, you know, setting up the cars the way, you know, so it, it fit the way you drive versus, you know, the, a standard. There really isn't a standard. Um, you're constantly tweaking, trying to get it to, to work for you. And uh, I know for us, uh, you know, with limited experience with that was has, has been a challenge all year long. Uh, you mentioned uh, setting up the car for a uh particular style of racing so to speak uh, but that's something you also develop as well as to you know what kind of a racer you're going to be do you feel like you've hit on a style that uh, you know you are comfortable with I think it's getting there um, every week or every race it, it you know something changes you get a little more aggressive um, you know <laughs> so it changes constantly for me right now you know being a, a one year, first year driver so uh, sometimes we don't do a lot of changes hoping that um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll come to the car instead of making the car come to me. Uh, in terms of being aggressive on the track, uh, I've had more than one driver tell me, and I'm interested in finding out from you if this was the case, but that, that first time out, uh, and then as things uh, progress along, um, some people will get that fever. Yeah, there's a guy out front of me, I'm going to go right by him. But other guys find that's a little bit of a hurdle to get over in terms of really getting in there and mixing it up. Yeah, passing was a lot harder than I expected. Um, because we, we don't have mirrors or anything, so we have no idea what's around us. So the guy in front of you that you're trying to get around doesn't really know you're back there. So then, you know, trying to find a line to get around them without bullying your way by uh, can be a challenge. You able to use your hearing at all to help you out with that? Uh, some cars are louder than others, and uh, you know, some drivers, uh, well, all the senses are in play. Right. Yeah, you you can hear you can hear a lot of the cars as they come up alongside of you, um, but you know you also have that receiver in in, in your uh, in your ears uh, listening for uh, you know Lena's to tell us when something goes wrong. Um, but yeah, you you can. It, but it, your your own car can be so loud that sometimes you won't hear them until they're right out, right next to you. How would you uh, how would you assess your overall performance in 2013? Steady progression where you wanted to be by the end of the year? Yeah, I would say it was a steady progression. Uh, I've watched uh, lots of videos of it from you know the first race back in 2012 up until the ones that we just had, and uh, yeah, I, I can see a, a big difference in the in the way it. Uh, the way I've driven, uh, my, my placing every week has uh, moved up, you know, a spot here, a spot there. I'm not quite up there in the top five where I'd like to be racing, you know, with, with those guys. But uh, we're getting there, um, slow but sure, but it's getting there. Well, I was going to say, uh, regards top fives, uh, just checking out season stats from uh, 2013, uh, a nice string of, of top fives in, in heat race competition, a couple as well in feature event action as well. So, uh, again, that's something you got to be pleased with. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we get out there, um, try to try to do our best and, and try to get the best finish we can. And, you know, first and foremost, just have a good time with it. That is the biggest part of all. And, uh Still helping out James with uh, with uh, his racing activities is all, or is he giving you uh, advice the other way, or is it kind of going back and forth? Um, yeah, uh, James and I have we work a lot together. Um, he helps me out tremendously with with stuff, and you know, just with his more he has a lot more experience with with this. Um, other guys have too. I mean, uh, D uh, Dave Amos, uh, Joey uh, Esray, they've all been a big help helping me out with you know parts I need or um, just information, things like that. But. Uh, yeah, uh, James, I helped him out last year for the Winter Nationals in his pits when we're not running. Um, so yeah, we still uh, still help each other out quite a bit. How excited are you about the uh, impending change in 2015 to full IMCA stock car rules? You're fairly close on your car as it sits now. Yeah, as it sits now, we're really close. Just a couple of small changes just to... Uh 
um, you know, abide by the uh, IMCA rules. Nothing too major. Um, I think it'll be nice. The the one thing I like about the whole IMCA rule package is, is that if you go to other tracks that are running it, um, you don't have to worry about changing for them. It's already a set rules, and you can just go right in and run with them. That's something you're looking forward to doing more of in the future? We'd like to, yes. We're visiting with Sean Hoskins this morning. He drives the number 74 street stock at Kokopo Speedway. We're going to continue our conversation here in just a moment on Racing Radio, Kokopo Speedway's Lap Time Live, brought to you by Kokopo Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. Household hazardous waste. Hey there, all you cats and schlep cats. Hopefully you're getting ready for the next drop-off day in the City of Yuma's Household Hazardous Waste Program. The event happens only four times a year, but it's a great way to dispose of unwanted and potentially dangerous corrosive, flammable, toxic, or reactive items that don't belong in a landfill or in our sewer system. Like your old paints, pesticides, fertilizers, household cleaners. Safely recycle e-waste, such as old computers or electronic equipment. Even drop off a few tires from that old car. So get it out of your house, out of your garage, out of your room closet, guest room, storage shed, or yard. Do it all for no additional fee. Here's the where and when of the City of Yuma's next Household Hazardous Waste Day. It's 8 a.m. to noon, Saturday, January 11th at 265 West 13th Street. Household Hazardous Waste. The Yuma Police Department averages 40 vehicle versus pedestrian accidents a year. That's 40 too many. We ask the driver to drive aware, the pedestrian to ride with care. Because the moment you're not aware of your surroundings could be your last moment. Drive aware, ride with care. No matter what type of air conditioning or heating help you need, schedule some help from One Hour Air Conditioning. Ready for the season? One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating can help. No AC at all? One Hour can help. Need help upgrading your old inefficient system? One Hour can help. Now's the time to schedule your annual air conditioning safety inspection for just $59. Call One Hour today at 783-4242. Some limitations and exclusions apply. We're always on time. To order stickers, SignPro can produce custom stickers with your logo or business information. Give them to your customers or label your equipment for a great professional look. That's SignPro, 783-7776 or stop by 1702 South Arizona Avenue. SignPro, where they are perfect to the letter. I'm Keith Lewis, co-owner and general manager of Monster Media, licensee of Z93 and Outlaw Country. I hope everyone had a blessed Christmas. Here we go into a new year with new challenges. Remember to keep God in your life and use his word for guidance. A wise king, King David, wrote in the book of Psalms 119, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A good New Year's resolution would be to read the Bible every day and let it enlighten your life. Have a happy and blessed New Year. You wouldn't expect your child to jump on a bike without learning how to safely ride first. Why would you let him ride an ATV without proper training? Riding an ATV is not as easy as it looks. You've got to learn the ropes before you hit the trails. The best way to learn how to ride is to take a training class. Many are free. Too many riders have been killed or seriously injured on ATVs. Don't become a statistic. Take knowledge to the extreme. Log on today to atvsafety.gov. Welcome back to Kokopo Speedway's Lap Time Live, presented by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating and by Kokopo Casino here on Outlaw Country, AM 1400. I'm once again your host, Mike Stanhope, and we are again joined in studio by Sean Hoskins, driver of the number 74 street stock as we look ahead to the 2014 season out at the Diamond in the Desert. And spent a little time earlier, Sean, talking about 2013. Out of all the racing moments you had during the year, was there one that stood out for you, one particular race or one particular happening on the track or perhaps in the fits? Um, I don't know if there's, you know, any that really stand out. Uh, each one 
has its own, you know, own fun. I mean, I, I guess the big one for me has to be uh, not this year, but 2012's uh, Turkey Classic, like my second or third race. Um, still learning how to drive the car and just got into a pile in the corner and just completely destroyed the front end of the car, like in my second or third race. Which was, you know, first accident for one, um, and just the learning, realizing you got to look a little further than your hood when you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a that's a dive into the deep end of the pool right out of the gate there. Uh, but you've raced pretty darn clean in 2013. Uh, I try to. Um, I, I think uh, there's there's always going to be bumping, and you're uh, you're always going to you know run into each other here and there. Um, but uh, from for me, and uh, I like to, you know, if I race people clean, they're going to race me clean. And I think that uh, it's been that way for the 2013 season, at least for me. Any particular goals that you have for 2014? Well, um, yeah, I, uh, I finished eighth in points this year. And um, my big goal would be to improve on that. Let's, you know, let's see if we can't get in the top five. A crack in the top five would be a nice deal as well. Uh, I, I would guess uh, some more top fives, some top threes, perhaps podium finish. That would be that would be the ultimate goal. Yes, it would. <laughs> How do you balance the demands of work time with play time? In other words, race time versus the demands of what you have to do career wise. Um, uh, you have to. I guess the big one at first, uh, I was. Um, you know, you tried to work every moment you had on the car, and uh, you know now I. I it's not that I don't put as much time and I don't put as much time as I need to into it. It's just it doesn't work out that way, uh, you know, with a full-time job and family and everything else. But, um, you know, you, you try to get your help from your friends. Um, you get the family out there maybe turning a wrench or two if you can and changing tires. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's a group effort to get it done. For one guy alone, it's just it's hard to do. I, I asked that question for the other reason, too, because uh, uh, we know many racers confront those same challenges. Uh, in your case, though, even a little more difficult because uh, you work at night a lot. Yeah, nights make it tough because uh, I don't think my neighbors want me, uh, you know, cranking this thing up at 2.30 in the morning when I get home. So, you know, um, maybe try to get a little bit of time in before work um, and then definitely, you know, Saturdays and Sundays um, is, is the time to get most of the work done. Let's uh, let's move to race day, so to speak. Particular way of uh, you know, kind of getting your game face on. Um, I, w I don't know. Uh, there's we get up. Um, usually uh, we have everything done the day before uh, if we can. Um, sometimes we are working on things. You know, Saturday morning trying to get it done to go to the track. Uh, we're usually you know get to the track pretty early. Um, so I mean, most of it is getting there, getting our sparking spot, and just kind of uh, going through and just. Uh, making sure everything is going to work for us. Uh, you know, it's. I don't know that there's so much uh, getting a game face on until you actually get behind the wheel and get in staging for the ref, you know, to get started. One thing I've noted uh, in walking through the pits uh, prior to race time at Cocopa Speedway, you see frenzied activity in some pits, but uh, there is a calm kind of in your pit for the most part, at least uh, from what I've sensed. Yeah, um, yeah we, we try to get as much done as we can before we leave, so we're not actually working out there in the dirt. Um, you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes it can be frenzied trying to get stuff done. Uh, there's been times where I've showed up uh, pretty late trying to get things done at the house before we got there. Um, mostly some from pro procrastination on my own part. Others, you know, things that you don't find broken until you start looking over them, you know, the day before. But yeah, we'd like to, when, when, once we get to the track, have that time to um, relax before we get out there instead of... Uh, you know, trying to hurry, hurry, hurry. Going out there with the heart in the chest, ooh, did we get this fixed, or ooh, right. is this going to be an issue? For sure, proper preparation, and it surely counts. Yes, it does. If you weren't driving a race car, would you uh, be back in somebody else's pits or uh, something else that would be out there for you? Oh, I'm sure if I wouldn't have picked up a car, I'd still be uh, working with James and Joey in the pits and, and helping out where I could there. Well, the friendships are one of the uh, greatest parts of racing, uh, and I know it extends beyond just the fellas you mentioned. Yes, oh, absolutely. Supporters who help make it possible for you to race know there's a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, there's, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, uh, James Dupree, Joey Estray, Dave Amos um, have all been big help as far as other drivers. Uh, my wife and my uh, Roxy and my, my daughters have been, you know, real supportive of it. Um, I, uh, some of the, my friends that have been a big help, uh, um, Ben Russell, John Deal, helped me out at home all the time with the car, getting things set up and getting them ready, getting things changed that when, when things break. Um, a couple of the sponsors, you know, Fat Harvey's Bar, 
Um, always been there, you know, for me. Uh, Leo Littlewood Designs. Um, my buddy Ben's, his uh, company, Ben's Wood. Um, there's just, uh, you know, uh, we're gonna, we're hoping to get some, some, you know, more sponsors for the year. Uh, I know Firehouse Subs is coming aboard this, for this season, which is going to be nice. Uh, get them, you know, some uh, advertising out there along with uh, some extra stickers on the car so we don't look so bare. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a nice-looking car, Sean, and uh, I just want to pass along to you this morning. Best of luck to you in 2014. Hope it's a big, big year for you. Thank you very much. Hey, and thank you for visiting with us this morning here on Lap Time Live. Sean Hoskins, once again, our guest this morning on Lap Time Live, getting set for action next Saturday night out at the Diamond in the Desert as we close in on launch for the 2014 racing season at Cocoa Speedway. Again, next Saturday at the Diamond in the Desert, round number one of the 2014 Cocoa Speedway racing series. Uh, lots of other big happenings out and around the Kokopa Entertainment Complex, which includes Kokopa Speedway and, of course, Kokopa Casino. And joining us again this morning for the Inside Scoop, good morning to you, Anna Corpus. Good morning. I hope everyone had a great Christmas holiday. Now it's time to start thinking about the end of the year. Tonight, Wild River is hosting UFC 168. It's Wildman versus Silva, and Chico's Rift will perform live after the fight. Wild River is also hosting a New, a New Year's Eve bash with Fosfro performing live. You can get your tickets now at Wild River. And keep in mind, because of the holiday, the Cocoa Pie Administration offices will be closed Wednesday, January 1st, and normal office hours resume Thursday, January 2nd. And remember, there's lots of activities going on all the time at the Cocoa Pie Enterprises, so check out the Facebook pages for updates. Have a great weekend and a happy new year. And a happy new year to you as well, Anna. And again, information on on those activities and more, all available through Kokopah.com. Just as easy to find out all you need to know about Kokopah Speedway, the big 2014 schedule now online, and you can check out lots of other content as well, including the new option for online ticketing and race registration, all available with a click of a mouse button. Well, just stop in at www.kokopahspeedway.com, and of course, be sure to like us on Facebook. Remember, too, that 2014 season passes are now on sale and you can also pick yourself up a set of schedules as well again that via the internet at kokopahspeedway.com those season passes good for all 2014 motorsports events at kokopah speedway and they represent a sizable savings on individual event admissions <laughs> ready to get back at it next saturday as we hope to see you out for the big season opener at kokopah speedway looking ahead to round number one of the 2014 14 Kokopa Speedway Racing Series. Gates will open at 5. Racing set for launch at 7 p.m. And before we go, we'd certainly like to wish you a happy new year if you're out there celebrating on Tuesday night. Well, hey, please do so safely and responsible. Certainly want to see you around for 2014, and we wish you a wonderful year ahead. You've been listening to Lap Time Live, presented by Kokopa Casino and by One Hour Air Conditioning and Heating. Back with more next Saturday morning morning, 11 a.m., here on Outlaw Country, a.m. 1400.